Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Jonathan came up with a good idea a couple of days ago that uh, I'd like to follow up on, and that is exploring the qua uh, in, a, uh, in a different way. Um, I want to provide a, an exercise and a meditation that we can do to, to uh, incorporate the qua with central equilibrium in a way we haven't done before. And um, I think it may be helpful because uh, a lot of the challenge of, of using the qua is the letting go of certain ideas that are probably happening at a pre-conscious level. That is, you're not thinking about them, but your body is doing them. And so there's a lot of muscular tension that is woven into your relationship to planet Earth via your body that um, actually gets in the way of Sung Kwa. And mostly it has to do with the sense of tightening up in order to protect ourselves, primarily from falling over. And uh, so, the extent to which you are able to then be able to release the tension in your hips and, and relax and, and use your qua effectively is dependent on the support that you're getting uh, from your legs, because that's the foundation it is building on. And if you are not confident in the support you're getting from your legs, then you probably are going to be using a lot more tension in your hips than is necessary. And there's also going to be a certain trepidation in, in, in moving and in, in taking a step or whatever. There's a tendency to, to lock up both hip joints in order to, to make a step because of our decades of doing it a certain way. So the advantages of, of Sun Kwa are huge. You, if, if, if you're released at the, at the Kwa, then you, the energy connection with the earth is magnified many, many times. Uh, your ability to move through space is, is improved because you're shifting away from just the idea of balancing on the earth to getting rooted and connected and moving efficiently, effectively um, by the way you're aligning your body, that you're trusting your legs to do the job so then you can, you can relax your torso. And the qua is the, is the junction between your legs and your torso, the interface between the two. So being able to to trust that is, is really important. And so I want to show you this exercise, which is done, it's partially a strength building exercise, but it's much more important as an awareness exercise so that you can, you can see how much you're holding on and how to confidently release muscular tension it gives you a, a, a tool for that, to, to focus on that. And to be able to see how much central equilibrium uh, contributes to the, to the process. So um, before, I, um, before we actually do the exercise, let me just show you what I'm talking about. So the qua is the inguinal crease. So it's, you've got your thigh, your torso, and that, that little valley there, which, which connects the two, is, is what we think of the qua. It's actually part of it. The qua is a whole hip area itself. But it's this valley that, that we like to focus on when we think about the qua, even though it's just the one side of it. It's the kind of the yin side of the uh, of the of the uh, of the qua 
But so when we are loading up, say making, I'm gonna make my right leg substantial. You know, I, I wanna feel the ball of my feet set, set my knee and the release is going to happen here so that I can, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be bowing forward and just feeling into my leg as I do that. So bowing forward and you can, I, I recommend you start off with just about this much of a bow rather than going all the way down. You can, as you, as you get comfortable with it, you can go down deeper, deeper, deeper so that you can put more of a load there and you can put more, you can put more of a load on as, as, you, as you get comfortable with it. But what we want to do here is find the central equilibrium. So even though, like doing it this way, you know, even though I'm bowing forward, I'm releasing here. Notice that what I'm not doing is I'm not balancing by pushing my butt back so that I can keep my weight centered over my, my foot like this. I'm actually keeping my butt from going back and just bowing forward so that the load is going into my legs without tensing up my leg muscles. So there will be a passive load that goes on there, but it's not that, that sense of tensing up to push away. So you're bowing, bowing forward like that, and then you're coming up and doing it without pushing the butt back. So you're finding your central equilibrium, even though your body is not balanced. So think of like a, uh, like a, a boom crane, right? You got the, you know, you got, you got the, 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 the cab of the crane in your, the, the, the big arm is sticking out there and you're able to lift heavy things at a distance because of the tensegrity of the structure. And same thing is happening here. So one of the things that you, know, you can do to practice this is, um, is to go up against a wall like this. So you can just get a sense of, of where your, your butt is, and so when you bow forward, you're, you're bowing forward like this, and you just go down, and you can't go backward if you're like this, but you, so you get a sense of, of that. So you wanna, bend the, you wanna bend the knees, and let's say I'm just doing it on one foot, I'm gonna bend my, uh, my knee so that my, feel the ball set the knee, and then I bow forward like this, and then I come back up. So it's the, you're using central equilibrium to create the, the, the strength necessary to, to keep your structure, even though you're putting it in, a, in a, an odd position. Okay, so let's, uh, why don't you stand up? I just, that was just by way of introduction. Let's stand up and, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll approach it like a, like a meditation here. And we'll begin with our three pillars, because that's going to, Get us um, linked up. Uh, step out. Now feel the balls of both feet. Unlock the knees. And center your weight so it's Really feeling it in the foot, but really centering around that, the balls of your feet. Reach with the crown of the head. Tuck in the chin. Open the jade pillow gate. Back to your lower back. Feel where your sacrum meets your coccyx, that little space there between the two. And down at the, the base of your sacrum where the tailbone is. So that's where the way loop point is. If 
Crowd down to the left. Releasing the claw, crowd down to the right. Nice and relax. You're sinking into the earth. At the same time, you're reaching up for the crown. Point with your index fingers. Feel your hands. Reach with the elbows. Relax your shoulders, open the shoulder joint. Let your body get very soon. Releasing into the conductive tissue system. That's what we're going to be using. When we do this, instead of getting some qua, we're going to be releasing and trusting the connective tissue system. As uh, you continue to feel that extension, feel that reaching. But as you do that, you want to bow forward. Now, as you bow forward, bring it very slowly, very methodically. Keep your spine straight. Now, so like this, we okay, so keep your spine straight, reaching. Pulling down from the Wei Lu, up from the from the Ni Wan. And the knees are unlocked. So you're relaxing your legs as much as you can, and whatever degree you can, you start to bow forward from here, from the inguinal crease, without pushing the butt back. So what you're not don't want to do is this, right? Go down. And no points are given by going deeper or faster or anything like that. You're, you want to go slow and just feel into that and noticing how much you can release as you bow forward. Breathe. Breathe through the elbows and you're just releasing down, keeping your spine straight. and feeling weight over the balls of the feet. Yeah. Relaxing and just allowing your, your muscles to relax as much as possible. So one of the things you may notice is your glutes, your butt muscles. If they're tense, if they're activated, you want to let that go and take the load into the front of your legs. And then very slowly you're coming up. And just to get a little break from that. Bow forward again. So this time you're, you're feeling, rather than pushing away from the earth, you're sinking down. You're getting very soon. And keep your spine straight. Just allow the weight of your body to do the work. And you ask your legs, your back, what can I let go of? Let go of your butt muscles. And just feel into that. Feel yourself getting very soon in this forward posture. You want to feel it so that it feels very strong. So there's a continuous line of energy, but also the tensegrity of the body from the feet to the top of your head to the, up to the tip of your fingers. So it actually, even though it looks weird and is, um, uh, looks off balance, it's actually quite stable. And then slowly come up. 
there and feeling as you're coming up that you're just allowing your body to restore. There's no pushing, pulling. There's just you're leading it. Pivot on your right heel. Feel the ball, set the knees, spiral down to the right. Pick up your left foot and step out a little bit. Feel the ball, set the knee, and turn. Okay, now we're going to do it on the left leg. We're going to do the same thing, but this time just using the left leg. Same idea here. You want to. <laughs> Release and sink into the posture. We're deliberately not forcing into any athletic moves right now. This is a meditation. This is sort of a, an awareness exercise. So you want to feel into your leg. You want to feel what is doing the work. Notice how much work your back leg is doing. So pick up the heel of that so that you're really focusing on that front leg. And how much can I sink into that leg, relax into that? Feel the connection all the way through. And then straighten up, feel moving from the quad, reaching up without pushing away from the earth. So you're sinking down. And let's do that again. Bowing forward, releasing. So you can see how you could do this as a standing meditation. You can just stand there and just allow yourself to hang there for a little while. And Get used to the idea of being sung in that leg. Releasing the qua, so you're sung qua, you're loading up the leg, and then come up without rocking back into your right leg. Keep your heel down. And we're gonna do the same thing this time into the right leg, but back weighted. So pick up your front heel. So you feel the ball set the knee. You're still reaching with the crown, reaching with the elbows, the fingers, feeling that, feeling the central equilibrium and bow forward. And just see, where, how much do you trust? And don't go any farther than you can, you feel safe because the feeling safe is what allows you to relax the muscular tension. We're trying to defuse the ticking time bomb of the sympathetic nervous system when it goes into its fight, flight, freeze mode and say, no, no, we can use this sympathetic nervous system consciously, knowingly, without that sense of urgency that comes with the uh, the idea that we're under, under duress. And slowly come up, feeling what it feels like to extend, to open. So this is a conscious feeling, conscious movement. And then feel yourself getting into center equilibrium. Now standing on one leg, very lightly on the toe of the other. Now we're going to go the other way. 
right foot forward. And this time you're gonna feel the ball, set the knee, and bow forward. And we do it facing you this time. You got the, the general picture there. We do it facing you because we do something a little different. So as we bow forward, we feel that relax. And you're loading up that. You're getting comfortable being in this forward weighted position, but still finding your central equilibrium in this, in this position, which would ordinarily be off balance. To be very strong in this position, very stable. So now what I want you to do is very slowly, without moving your butt, you're just going to turn slowly to the right. So you're pivoting from the claw. You're releasing down and turning to the right. And very slowly turning to the left. So you're using your legs as a foundation and using your claw as a pivot point. And turn back to center. Turn to right. This is back to center. This is heightening your awareness of what it means to use the claw as a pivot. And to trust that leg, turning to the left, Back to center. Now let's go to the back foot. Left ball, set the left knee. See, release down into the claw, pick up the front heel, and bow forward. So also be aware of where in your foot you're taking your weight. You want to feel that where the load is going because that affects. Just for fun, just kind of put the weight on the outside of your foot and notice what that does to the structure. It, it destabilizes. You want to bring it back to the ball of the foot along the medial line, along the big toe line. And then spiral down, turn to the left, releasing. Being very comfortable and back to center and turn to the right. Back to center. To the left. Right. And you can see also as you practice this, you get more confident and you can do things to create more of a load so that you know there's more of a more stress on the system, which then you can learn to handle and dissipate and, and to control. Let's see, I'm in my front leg now for the ball set the knee and I bow and I want to go a little deeper and maybe bring my arms out, right? And feel that, right? So coming up so that I'm very lightly on my toe, my back foot, right? And be able to, to sit into this posture and to feel the stability of the leg and which gives me the freedom to then move from the claw very powerfully, and, but also um, with a certain amount of agility. And step in. Step 
Bring your left foot in. Take a deep breath. And disappear the key. Take a seat. Let's see if there's any questions. Okay. Mm. Uh, that was really a pleasure. A pleasurable meditation. I know I was using all my energy just trying to keep up and trying to learn the moves, but I can really see the potential in that. And uh, as talk also about, it feels to me by using the claw, you need a, a strong core and strong a, a strong core. And so I I can feel that through the exercise, which is good. I've been taking Pilates. So, but I could definitely feel it in my core while we're going through that at the same time, the streaming energy going from the base of my skull through my neck was pretty intense. I don't know. I'm just an observer. Thank you. Uh, the, yes, the, the core will be addressed, but um, not in any conventional way. Not in the way you do it in Pilates. It's it's entirely different um, approach to it. Oh, I was more talking the feeling where I was feeling I was feeling which probably says I was doing it wrong because I was trying not to use my butt, so I was feeling it in my core. Okay, well we want to start to let go of some of that. So it it so it's a, there's a shift that occurs because if you it. When we're talking about core, we're generally talking about a muscular activity. And we're talking about, in this case, it's we're shifting away from that. It's not to say that muscles aren't used. They are. They always are, whether you're, you know, whether you want to or not, you're, you're using muscles. But the, the focus is on something else. It's on more on the connective tissue system and the way that things are aligned than it is on the actual physical strength that is using to to support it. So it's this is just a an introduction to this this exercise. And as you do it, it's you start to say, oh, what can I let go of? What muscular activity, what muscular uh, holding can I let go of that I have trusted for decades and say, okay, I don't need that. And so, yes, core will be addressed, but in a passive way. Jonathan. So following up on what we were doing two weeks ago, you and I with this, there was that feeling of instability that you tested out to be even more stable because old leg muscles that uh, gave me the sense of stability are actually not the ones being used to create when you're sung and doing it right. New muscles come into play, but they're still like need to be, you know, worked up a little bit to give you that old feeling even of muscular stability. So is that paradox of, you know, where the, uh, the the insubstantial was coming through more, that old sense of substantial was feeling less, and it, there's a little paradox in there. Uh, eloquently stated, uh, Ching Min Ching said, "It feels precarious." That's it. It feels precarious. When you're doing it right, it feels precarious. Right. Because it's, it's, it's not, you're not holding on with this. You're saying, oh, I can fly. And, and your body mind says, what, are you crazy? And, and so what, let go of these 
let go of this, you know, this trapeze, you know, I, <laughs> this is my stability here, you know, yeah, and, but you're not going to be able to, to, to do the, the maneuver unless you let go of the trapeze. And so that's this interesting. Is, yeah. There was that one mo second there that I felt I was Iron Man flying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that part's what we're looking for. <laughs> we're looking for that flying part. Uh, Scott. So um, at certain times, I would definitely feel it in my upper thighs. And it, I, I was kind of under the assumption and listening to everything that everybody said that that's sort of an indication that I'm not doing it right because when i could really release into the I really release into it then my thighs would go away and it was really nothing it was too much effort it was a little bit of effort but not a lot i mean or is that or is it just going to be in your thighs for a while uh you will feel something in your thighs but uh you're going to see how much you can let go and and so it's and, and think of it as rather than I'm doing it wrong, this is a new exercise which I can refine by doing it, practicing it some more, and seeing because each time you go there, you let go of something new. Because you're not going to be able to reprogram many decades of, of life in one one uh, episode, right? One one sit down. You got to have to uh, you have to go back to it again and again each time. You, you take your body mind to a new place and it says, no, 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 no. And then you go there the next time it's like, okay, maybe, but, but not that other thing yet. And the next time it's like, okay, maybe this, well, we'll, we'll negotiate with that too. And it just, you're gradually increasing your confidence. So what can I let go of? What can I let go of? What, how much of this do I need in order to be able to stand up? One of the, the hard things, this goes back to the core idea, is letting go of butt tension and back tension. How do I keep my spine straight without tensing my muscles? You know, and that's that's the challenge. That's that's a that's that's a challenge. How do I how do I bend over like that without grabbing on with my butt? Nick. I have an answer to that question. Oh, I like it. Good. Yeah, and it's, it's your phrase, poles and opposition. One up here and one down there, opposite ends, and you establish that ten, uh, dynamic relationship. I don't want to use the word tension. Uh, and then it just, yeah. Tensegrity, yeah. Tensegrity, yeah. Yeah, right. Well, and I found that the more I relaxed into the quad, the more I was aware of that lower back and, and it and it releasing. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, those those things all go together. Yep. Yeah. There's a uh, the quad, when you start to really go the quad, then the it there's there's a certain freak out that accompanies that, which then kicks in the the fight, fight, freeze response which causes the muscular tension. And so be able to say, no, no, I trust this, I trust it. Then you start to let go, let go, let go. And let go, but letting go into a shape. So it's like, a, you know, pouring water into a glass rather than just pouring it onto the floor. You know, you're not just letting, letting it spill out all over the place. You're saying, no, no, we're gonna put it, we're gonna create a little structure here that we like, and we're gonna pour the water into the structure. And the water is gonna, it's gonna behave like water does, and it's going to fill the space up to the the line of, that you filled it, and and you move forward from there. And so that's kind of what we're doing with that. Val, you had to... <laughs> you know, kids, no. kids, kids, settle down, settle down, kids. <laughs> Take turns. Um, what I was focusing on. Um... Not worrying so much for me, having you know, doing this for the first time. Um, I was focusing on having the squishy baby butt. You know, I wasn't too worried how much tension I was feeling in the weighted leg, you know, because it was working, but it wasn't like ab absurdly so. But keeping, I knew from having done some of this work with you before, saying that, you know, if the butt's relaxed, if the glutes are relaxed, 
then you're going to have some claw. You're going to have that relaxed claw. So that, in that regard, I was quite successful. I need to work on keeping those poles in opposition because I, my husband pointed out very nicely to me that, it, you know, the upper back was bent a little bit. And I knew there was something going on up there, but I was so invested in my squishy baby butt <laughs> that I didn't squishy think. Baby that, butt. I like it. <laughs> that <happened. That's> a <laughs> <laughs> um, a, uh, uh, if you're as you're training, use the wall thing or, or chair or anything like that. Stick your butt against that, and then as you you'll see how much you are compensating for for. You know, by pushing your butt back whenever whenever you do that, when you have something, uh, a frame of reference there, it's like, oh, oh, you know, because you know, everything we've done before is like more, 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 and and doesn't matter how you get there. And this is saying, no, 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 how you get there is all, all that's important. Scott, you have something? Yeah, truthfully, I found it, e I found it easy to just focus on just, Think of the fact that I'm only moving my claw. Absolutely nothing else is moving. So I'm just moving the claw, right? It's a, it's the hinge and I'm just opening and closing the hinge. That's it. Beautiful. And I felt nothing, you know, I, I, I was really full and I was really getting it. So I think I, I think I had it. Excellent. That's yeah. good. So yeah, focus on the hinge. That's good. Yeah. Squishy baby butt. Focus <laughs> on the hinge. I like it. <laughs> We're getting a language for this now. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> Richard. Well, I'm just reminded of, you know, having worked with masters who um, say, feel my leg, and there's absolutely no muscular tone to the muscles in their leg. You know, the powerful movements are not generated by the muscles. Right. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's very, it's, it's, it's very mysterious, and you're trying to bring us through the mystery, as you often say. Um. <laughs> yeah, well, this is, this is, oh, wait, all that mysterious stuff, it, it is learnable, and it is teachable. We just have to find the right language, you know, so we got squishy baby butt, we got the hinge, <laughs> we, <got, laughs> we, got, we, got, we got the things necessary to, to, uh, to tell the story. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, Sharon. Um, I was uh, kind of astounded that um, that I like I, I felt the relaxation, but then when I told myself to relax again and check in, that it was even more around my hip that needed to be released. But I never even felt the returning of that. I didn't feel the return of the tension. Um, but yet, nice. you know um nice good good Anybody else? but you have to keep you have to keep, keep you just have to keep, keep doing it and doing it and do it. you don't do it you don't yeah. do it once and you're done right let's do it again not right now let's just go through a couple <laughs> minutes of it just while it's fresh in our minds and just just kind of feel into that okay so let you jump up and uh we got a few minutes So feel your three pillars, hold your feet, crown of the, crown of the head, tuck in the chin, relax your lower back, you're going to straighten your spine, kung kwa, point, elbows, okay, and step forward with your left foot, and uh, pick up your right heel. You're going to load it up into that left leg, feeling your center of equilibrium. And as you bow forward, you're releasing the quad, but you're maintaining that feeling of center of equilibrium. And relax and sink and feel into that. What can you let go? Relax your lower back. Relax. Let that go. Relax your shoulders. Your your body, your upper body, squishy baby butt. 
Yeah, this there. Good. Yield. How much leg tension can you let go? We just lift, settle up into that. And very slowly coming up. Now shifting back into your back leg at all. You're loading up that front leg. You're trusting that leg. And bow forward. Feel. Release. Reach out with your arms. Without tension. Nice and relax. Relax your lower back. Relax your butt as you do that. Just by adding that little bit of weight there in front of you, loads up the system even more and gives you something to play with. And hands come down. Relax. And up. And step forward with your right foot. Pick up your left heel and bow forward. Release very much controlled, keeping your central equilibrium. If someone were to come along and push on you, you have no trouble keeping that stability. Relax, turn, releasing, feeling the hinge. Feel the turn from the quad back and forth, nice, easy, like a, a screen door uh, moving in the breeze. And straighten up. Step in. Deep breath. And disappear the chi. Yeah, take a seat. We're going to jump a couple minutes. Thank you for the suggestion, Jonathan. That was really uh, very, very helpful. That's a uh, very good, good exercise. Keith, you had something? Uh, just a second time around there. It was less time, just one time quickly through. It felt better. Uh, yeah. To use a terminology, was able to release more uh, because when you're, to me, you know, it's just getting that, that center balance from which to start the movement from you know it's so uh, it's Beautiful. but it's it feels good it feels really good Beautiful. Beautiful. great scott uh, one thing i meant to mention before but i forgot one the one thing i noticed i was doing that was making it much more difficult as i kept sinking into my leg you know it's sinking bending that leg too much and uh, my body bending your knee. yeah bending bending my you know sinking down into the leg bending the knee and my body's not ready for doing it that low. Yeah, and I think that would kind of defeat the purpose of the exercise. So you want to keep yeah. that keep, keep that yeah. knee set as you're doing it, because we're really just focusing on the qua, saying, okay, qua, you're we're focusing, as you said before, that you're focusing on that hinge. So we don't need other hinges, you know, opening and closing to uh, you know, when we're focusing on that one. Well, it's like Sharon said, it's insidious. It's like, you don't know that I'm, I don't notice, but I'm just thinking a little bit at a time and a little bit at a time. And all of a sudden I'm like, why, why am I burning again? Oh, because that's <laughs> six inches. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Good. Good. Jonathan. So with all this focus on the qua, I'm remembering being at the seaport in that body show, the human body they had. Yeah. And at, yeah. The, at the top of the hip joint are these like cue balls on either side they're like really almost polished balls how much 
when we're evolving, moving around, does is that in play? Can we make it more in play? Yes. How does that? Yes. Hmm. And and a, a lot of problems that people get with their hips is that they have the muscular tension is so so strong it's kind of immobilized those that those those that joint so it doesn't doesn't move without without a lot of effort which then causes a lot of grinding and and things wear out prematurely so you want so by releasing the qua you learn to trust mm -hmm. that then the acetabulum you know can can you know, the, the the ball can move in the socket and you get that nice thing that because there's a uh, there's a, a, a layer of cartilage there which acts as a buffer and if you're if you're not unduly stressing the cartilage, then your hips will, will last a little longer. Great. Now, I mean, if anyone hasn't seen it, it's like off of a pool table, how polished and round that ball is on either side. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Okay, anybody else? Good. Thank you all for your, your comments. It's great. Very helpful. <laughs> Beautiful. Great. Uh, Keith, you had something? Oh, you said you're saying bye bye. <laughs> Good. Okay. <laughs> Great. Okay. Uh, love you all. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Love you, guys. Love, you. love you, Maria. Maria. Bye. <laughs>